Shalom Aleichem. Hayyem Yem Shlishi. Today is Tuesday. It's Chav Ches Koyach Oder. It's one day after Chav Zayin Oder. Hey Tov Shin Pei Gimel. And we're learning the third class on the Maimed Achid, which is Alechem, which is Muga. In Maluk Achid Dalit. From Tov Shin Lamed Hey, which is our year of my modem. This year, Tov Shin Pei Gimel, we now that we're learning the modem Tov Shin Lamed Hey, and we're trying to squeeze in a few extra as we always do if David still allows this Maimed is seven Amudim and four lines could easily have been done in two classes if I wanted to crunch it into one I could have crunched it into one but we did it in three the first class was probably 45 minutes or more the second class was 35 minutes this class may be even shorter but I think it's the right way to do it People complain to me that I uh, don't know when to stop talking. I was in Montreal for the weekend, and the number one issue before I even arrived, the Shalom Aleichem, was uh, no when to stop for a niggin. The truth of the matter is, stopping for a niggin, first of all, it's in Pachta Shavua. That Hifshik Akadish Baruch Hu Meisha Ben Parsha LePasha Hashem gives Meisha Rabbeinu Hashem gives Meisha Rabbeinu time to break. So breaking is always a good thing. And uh, the truth of the matter is, a uh, fabreng with more interruptions, more nagunim, more varam kite, more arum is a more effective fabreng. Be that as it may, we're doing this maimed in three parts, and we're doing it from the inside out. The first shir, the way I'm going to present it, is the two concepts of tshuva. Tshuva, which is the culmination of Yiddishkeit, that although it's ledalik shur, it's beligavul. It's beyond Adam. But it has to do with the madregas of Adam Ha'evid, with the mahus of the person doing the service. And therefore, even the beligavul of this tshuva has a seder. And the higher concept of tshuva is predicated on bitl. When a person is bottled to the abishta, the abishta within the person does the tshuva. And as I explained to you in the first class at length, this has every mile. It has the mile of Avoid the you're doing it because you're doing the bittel. And the bittel means the evacuation of self, taking your own form out of the way to allow the divine which is within you to show itself. And on the other hand, it's the divine that does the tshuva because you're giving the divine the possibility to do the tshuva through you. And therefore, there's no limits. There's nothing that you cannot do. That's how the Rebbe described it. And the Rebbe connected it to the avoid of Yidn in Golos, especially at the end of Golos. The avoidum of al yevash mipnei hamaligim, not to be dissuaded, derailed by scoffers, people who mock and laugh. And the Rebbe says this is the true idea of the Malam and Azman. The idea that tshuva takes up no time. There's no cheshbon, there's no seder, not even the in hadilug hamabligavol. Is this latter kind of tshuva? And this lot of kind of truth has every mile because it's based on bittel. On the one hand, it's entirely the person, on the other hand, it's entirely al within the person. This was linked to the juxtaposition between Tishrei and Nisan. The Tishrei is Teva and Gvul and Avrede Bakayach Atzmai. Nisan is Nes and Beli Gvul and Gila Lakus Melvaila. And that there is a fusion between the two. But here the Rebbe developed a very fascinating idea. In the beginning of time, we say that the Abish that created the world actually in Tishrei, in a limited way. But since the Kavona and the Machshava was that it has to do with Nisan and miracles and Beligavol, so hidden in the world of Teva is Nes. But when Mashiach comes, it's going to be the other way around. That Benis Nasigin Lehigoyal, what's going to be revealed is the union of Nisan. But hidden behind the Nisan is going to be the Tshuva Bekoyach Atma, the way Bekoyach Atma of Tishrei. So both in the beginning of creation and in the end of time, there's a juxtaposition between Tishrei and Nisan. But in the beginning of time, the actual time of creation is Tishrei. But the Machshava for this Tishrei is Nisan, because the Kavon of the Gavul of the world is that it's revealed the Beligvul of Nes. 
But when Mashiach comes, it'll be actually in Chedesh Nisan. Because it'll be revealing something which is beyond the limitations of a person. But hidden behind it will be Tishrei because it's based on Avedim Bekeach So in short, there's a juxtaposition between Tishrei and Nisan as it plays itself out in the beginning of time. Then the outside it's Tishrei and the hidden behind it is Nisan. And at the end of time, at the outside, is Nisn, at the beginning of time, is Tishrei. Now comes the third ring, the third direct dimension. And this is not linking Nisn and Tishrei, it's linking the two Psukim of Bereshah's Baralachim, it's Hashemayim, it's Haaretz. And the Pasuk HaChedet, it's Alechem Reish Chadashim, the Yishin Hul Hashem, Lechem Lechad She'ashon. Now basically, this juxtaposition is identical with the Nisn and Tishrei juxtaposition. But specifically, they're different. Because in this third Maima you'll see in Perik Tess that the Rebbe is going to say that there are actually three stages. This Chav Hayelo, which is connected to Bereshit's Baruch the Kimmah Zeshmaim Vesaretz. There is Tishrei, which is connected to the creation of other Bereshit. And these two ideas are called Koi and Zeh. Koi Amar Hashem and Zeh Hadavar, where Godness is completely hidden behind worldliness and where Godness is revealed through worldliness but on the worldly level. And higher than both of those is Nisan and Achedesh Hazalachem. So the juxtaposition of Achedesh Hazalachem and Bereshit Baralakim is deeper or more disparate than the juxtaposition of Nisan and Tishrei. Because the juxtaposition of Nisan and Tishrei, which the previous class discussed, was the juxtaposition between Nisan and Reish Hashanah, which is Aleph Tishrei, the creation of Adam and and the purpose of creation. And we're going to be discussing in this class the Achedish al Alchem juxtaposition against Bereshit's Baruch Lakim is Nisn against Chavhei Biyalo. And of course, of course, the point, of course, is going to be that Chavhei Biyalo represents world more than Aleph Tish, because Aleph Tish represents the creation of man, which has to do at least with the purpose of the world. And Chavhei Biyalo has to do with the world before it has a purpose. And the juxtaposition of Nisn and Chavhei Biyalo is going to be an even greater notion of bringing together the infinity of the purpose of creation and the finitude and the separateness and the concealment of the creation itself based on the fact that when the Abish created the world even on Chav Hei Be'yavol the Kavana, the intention was as we discussed in the introduction that I gave you in the previous class was that ultimately in the world itself Godliness will be revealed not just on the Madreg of Zeh which is Reish Hashanah but on the Madreg of Nes which is Nisan and Pesach and that's what this Maimon is going to be about. So to repeat it again one more time, the middle shear was about Nisan versus Tishrei Rosh Hashanah. This shear is about Achedish Zalachem versus Beishas Baralakim. It's Nisan versus Chavhei Biyalo. And here, to an even greater extent than in the previous Maimon, the argument is going to be that the Abishta made a world separate from Elokus, so that when the Elokus comes into the world, it's not that it's destroying the world, but that the world itself is holding the Getlachem. Now we're going to start learning the Maimon inside. There's no reason not to. And all we're going to do today is page Kuf the Gimel. If you have my PDF, which is up online, the first page, numbers 19, 20, and 21 and 22, and then we're going to jump to the basically the last page of the Maimon and do page Kuf Tzadik Tess, which begins with number 23, until at the very, very top of Resh. The Rebbe begins, it says in the pause, that the first month of the year is Chedesh Nisan. And of course, it's the first mitzvah in Tehidah, the mitzvah of Kiddush HaChedesh. Kiddush Chadosh and Eber Shon. And we all know what it says in the Yenis and Benazil. The one that Abish created the world, the first month was Tishrei. And Mishabach and Biyanke Vavon, when Abish gave us the Tehidah, the first month of the year became Nisan. And this is where the Tate is now speaking to Achedish Azeh, the month of Nisan, is Reish Chadosh, becomes the head of the month now when the Abish is eaten out of Mitzrayim. As opposed to when the Abish created the world when Tisha was Reish Hashanah, the Chadosh. Reish Chadosh. The Ease of the Medish, the Medish explains who, but the Pirish Ashi, Reish Pasha, the Pirish. It's a Medish, but in Pirish, it's in Pirish Ashi, Omar Rabbi Yitzchak, Rabbi Yitzchak said. There was no need to begin the Torah. It would have been more reasonable to start the Torah with the Chedesh because it's the first mitzvah in the Torah. In other words, Torah is not a history book. Torah is a book of divine instruction. And every detail of history recorded in the Torah has to be a part of the third being the most important thing everything has to be a lesson for him so the Shaila becomes why does the Torah begin with the story of creation and Bereshit they should start with mitzvahs 
So the Medish answers, why did Hashem start the Medish? Which tells us some stories in history, which creates so much trouble. It would have been just fine to start from Achelich Dalachem. The answer is, Hashem wants his people to know how powerful he is. How powerful he is, Lasses Ahem Nachlas Goyim, to give them inheritance of alongside the nations. Hashem could do whatever he wants, including Yidin, giving Yidin their property. This is the Pasha Tepshat, right? Bereshit Baral Kim tells us that. Everything belongs to Hakadosh Baruch Hu. Who nasna? Who nasna Who nasna lashed isher be'enov? Who not lomehem be'nasna lanu? That's the pasuk. The meaning of the bereishis versus achedish is alechem. So achedish is alechem is taira, and the taira is taira. Teaches about mitzvahs, serving Hashem, and the historical beginning is simply to tell us that Hashem owns the whole world. Hashem aratz amleya. As Rashi says, this is the Pashat reason for why the Tere begins with Bereshis and not with Harchedish So the Rebbe, the Rebbe doesn't study this juxtaposition of Yiddishkeit versus Hashem being the Balabayas over the world and giving us it to Israel. But rather he discusses Yiddishkeit, Tere Mitzvah, versus the simple phenomena. Of creation. That's how this mimer goes. And he continues and he says, number 20, four lines into the mimer, api, ayedu, everybody knows. And he brings in footnote four, ukut lifti v'yitzchak and ukut asichas, from chaylu kalaf. Shagam shayla b'tayri tayru, when tayru asks a question, even though the tayru has an answer, the tayru, the question stands. If the question is a question asked by tayru in tayru, the question is also an end in itself. The question besides for somebody that needs an answer is an inyan b'fnei atzmei. Because it's Tere Semes. So they look at Rabbi Yishleim, and accordingly we could say, Since the Medrash frames it as a question and then an answer, and the Medrash is of course part of Tere Semes. The beginning of Tere should have been, or could have been, Now although the Medrash then gives an answer, why? But there still is the notion. And bracket, or befrat, and this particular observation is enhanced because lashon amedeshu. The form of this medesh is not that hoyet sarech lahaschal satera mechedish as alachem, but rather loy hoyet sarech lahaschal satera elo mechedish as alachem. It's presented as a double negative. The tater should not have begun any other way except with mitzvah sachedish as alachem. Because whenever you have the Lashem, Loi Chulu Elo, Meire Shehuli Ikuv, and again here there's a matter, Malcolm footnote 5, is Mitzayin to a Teisvist and to Yad Malachi. That whenever you have a double negative to make an argument, it says that this is not a possibility, it's an absolute. So like Loi Elo, Loi, right? Loi Nivra, Ani Loi Nivrei Si El Lashamesh Eskeni, right? Kol Loi Loi Nivra El Litzavis Lazeh. So the same is true here. Loi ha yitzadach lahaschah satera. Elam ha'chedesh adalachem means that this is a an absolute truth that the tater should begin with tater, with mitzvahs. And therefore, even though there's an answer to why you begin with bereshit, and the bere- answer which is brought to the Medesh and the Rashi has to do with the ownership of Eretz Yisrael, says the Rebbe, tzorech leimu, we have to say, hu, I'm sorry, hu gama li b'demes. It's true even in the end. That although the Teda actually starts with Bereshit, the Teda actually begins with Chedesh. That spiritually speaking, the Teda doesn't begin with Bereshit, it begins with Chedesh. And the Rebbe writes in his Maimer, which is from Tafresh Ayin Alf, as it says in footnote 5. Page 7. 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 Page so it's not just that he could have started with Achedish, and in fact we don't start with Achedish, and instead start with Bereshit, but Bepnim Yitzhan we're starting with Achedish, even though Bechitzen Yitz was starting with Bereshit. El explains the Rebbe Narvadan, She'in Yin Zeh Shateyna Maschalaz Bechedish Olachem, this notion. And the Teyna begins with Achedish, as Bepnim is spiritually, while Begiloi superficially and in an overt way, Hascholas Hateyna, the beginning of the Teyna, is Bebreshit's Bar, because Bebreshit's Bar of the so there's a truth to the potatoes beginning with Achedish and Alechem, even though on the outside it begins with Bereshis. Now what's going to be the answer? 
The answer is going to be because the Abish that created the world for Teda. The Abish created the world for Gilead Lakus. The Abish that created the world for Truva. And the Kavana Sabriya was for Teda, was for Gilead Lakus, was for Truva. So when Hashem created the world, he had a Kavana, like we had in the second Shir on this Maimed, that it should be filled with Lakus and become a godly world. So the Kavana, the intent of the creation was that the creation should become filled with godliness. So, if the intent of the creation was to become filled with godliness, why doesn't it begin that way? And of course the answer is because the intent of the Abishta was that the world should be filled with godliness. If the Abishta makes a world which is initially godly, if Hashem creates a world which is initially godly, then it's not really a world. And that's why both have to be true. There's a bedacious, there's a world that's created as an entity unto itself. And there's the pnimius of that world, there is the machshava, the kavan of that world, which is that ultimately it should be filled with godliness, which is represented by achedish as alachem, but that's only subliminally, that's only under the surface. And on the surface you're beginning with bracious. So it allows for the world to be a metzias separate from alakus, and it also allows for this world, which is created a metzias, which is separate from alakus, to be able to hold alakus on the highest levels until the madega of achedish as alachem. That's what the Maimon is going to teach us. So you have to have both. You have to have both. You have to have the chitzenius of Breshis. You have to have the pnimius of Achaydish. And you have to have that the pnimius of the Achaydish is the pnimius of the chitzenius. So you should be able to bring the Achaydish into the Breshis. And the Rebbe continues number 21, second paragraph on page we can connect this juxtaposition of Achedish and Bereshis as we know the reconciliation the the harmony the synthesis which is created in Beis Hadeyes the two appears when the Ebesh created the world which is B'Tishrei Nivra Ha'olam and the Rebbe says in parenthesis Chafayelo the opinion of Rabbi Yez like explained in the previous Rebbe's Benhokis was about Tshuva like the story is explained in the beginning of his Medish Pig and Abeliezer, that his father was a rich man, and his father wanted to support Teda. But his father wanted to support Teda that other people should learn it, because the people learning Teda are Nebuchs, are poor, and he's the Temchei Teda, Temchei Ma'ushar, Atikir Ma'ushar, Al Mereshe, he so to speak hired in the lame day Teda, and he had this son who had a desperate desire to go and learn Teda, and his father didn't let him, and he ran away. And then he wanted to disown him, only to discover that one of the greatest Hanoim was his own son, Rabbi Yezer ben Horkinus. So he rewrote his will, giving all of his wealth to his son, the ben Tena. But Rabbi Yezer represents the Baal Tshuva, and he therefore sees everything through Tshuva eyes. He thinks the Yiddishkeit through Tshuva eyes, and he therefore says, creation is in Tishrei, Chav Biel, and as the Rebbe says in the Maimir, that's the Psak. The Allah is, the Metziah says, there was Chav Biel, the Hashem created the world. But that's Rabbi Yeshua, the post Rabbi Yeshua, she says, she Nisan. Or Chav Hei Adir Nevra Ha'aylam, the world was created. And Rabbi Yeshua, the Mishnah says in Ovis, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Chanan is Asher Yeladate. He's a Blessed Ben Hurkinus's best friend. But in terms of their backgrounds, their Menakot Zalakos, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Hurkinus, Rabbi Yeshua Ben Chanan's mother raised him for Tere Mamish from conception and from birth and from infancy. He was the ultimate tzaddik. He's called Asher Yeladate. Fortunate is he or she who gave birth to him. And therefore he says, he has a tzaddik's mindset, a tzaddik's spectacle, so he sees everything including creation itself. So, Machlaik is a mitzis, right, between the Baal Tshuva, who sees the whole creation as Tshuva, and connects it to Elul and Tishrei, Chav Hayel and Tishrei, and the tzaddik, who sees the whole world through the eyes of the tzaddik, and he connects the creation to Nisan and Chav Hayel So, who's right? And the answer is, Shabri, Abapel, Isaac, Tishrei, creation, in fact, happens in Tishrei, like the Baal Tshuva, like Rebbe Zabin Hukkinus says, because the point of the creation is to, we should raise it up from our end. But on the other hand, Vamach Shava, the thought, which happens before the creation, was Livri, Yisraelim, to create the world. Isaac, Benisim, happens in Nisim. And the thought that happens in Nisim before Tishrei is the Pnimius of the actual creation, which happens in Tishrei. All of us know We all understand that thought is the inner intent and end of the action. When you do an action, that action hopefully followed a thought, which is it comes after the thought. So you're acting based on that thought. 
And therefore, Kumtais Nimtza, Shabri, Yavapel, Isabetishte, in fact, creation happens in Tishte. But what we see at the moment of creation is Chitzeni is the the outer creation, which is a world which seems to be an entity unto itself, separate from Elokus. And previous Abriya, the Kavana that creation was Hebe in Nisan, is the idea of Nisan to be Magal Elokus in this world. And like the Rebbe said in the part of the mind we learned in the second Shia, in Paid Exayin, the world has to be created in Tishrei, so it should be separate from Elokus. But the world is able to receive the Elokus, which is added to the creation, because the purpose of creation from the outside is that it should hold a lakus, which is the kavana of creating the world in in this now that, that was that. And, and of course then the Rebbe went on to say the same is true of Mashiach is going to come that the Rebbe of Herkness is right that the way Mashiach comes is an oifen of Tishrei, Tshuva but the time that Mashiach comes is an oifen of Nisan happens, Chedish Nisan, but Nisan Nigalu because although the Gila of Mashiach has to do with our Tshuva, the Gila of Mashiach, which has to do with our Tshuva, is revealed in a way which is far beyond our Tshuva, the way of Malmaila Lamato, and therefore it happens actually in this, meaning in the beginning of time, Bechitzanius you see Tishrei, and Bepnimius is Nisan, and the end of time, Bepnimius, it's, it's bringing a Lukus into Tishrei, what you're seeing is Nisan. And the Rebbe says, just like in creation, there's this. Tishrei Nisan juxtaposition. And we reconcile them, we make peace between the Sheet of Allah's Rabbi as far as creation is concerned. We make peace with the Sheet of Allah's Rabbi as far as when Mashiach is going to come. It says, that ever the same is true in the Chol Satayr. It says, Shahat Chol Satayr, Maschal is Bibreshis, but of a game of the world begins the Tayr, begins the creation. Habri, Abba Pele, Sabbat Tishrei, which is the actual creation begins in Chafiel and Tishrei. That's Bechitayn, that's in the outside, that's what you see. Our Bapnim is under the surface. What you don't see has Chalas at Taylor, the beginning of Taylor. Is the Chedish Alchem, which is Kyle Chedishness. So just like we understand that there's a way of resolving the conflict between Nisan and Tishrei, there is equally a way of resolving the conflict between Breshas Bar Alakim and the Chedish Alchem. That Bechitzeni is the truth of Breshas Bar Alakim. And Bapnim is the whole truth of the Breshas Bar Alakim is the Chedish Alchem. Now we go to the end of the Maimon, and we assume that we learned the Maimon already because we did. The higher bittle of Tshuva never spoke about the first class. And the idea that since the Kavan of the world was to reveal the Lukus in it, it's able to receive the Lukus. And ultimately in the world, as such, you see godliness which is above the world altogether. So the Rebbe starts on top of Kuv Tzadik when he says, now that we explained at length the Tivach, the reconciliation and the juxtaposition of this non and creation. And Tishri and Nisan Mashiach comes. It also explains the juxtaposition of Om and Ab Yitzchak. Ab Yitzchak says, La Yah Yitzchak, the Chaschad, the Tere, the Machid, the Shadal, the Tere, the Shadal, the with Pasha Sachidish. Which has to do with Tere and Mitzvah, the Indians of Gamaliel, but this is true. Canal, but Chilas Hamaimir, that the Ike purpose of creation is Tere and Mitzvah. Aye, Bazay, Zesha, Tere and Maschelis. The fact that Tere does begin. With Bresh is Borolikim with creation. Afsh in Yenat Tayr, who even though the whole purpose of Tayr is Amshach as Vegile bringing down and revealing aid in Seifa Belig Vosholamai, Lamishach as Veilamis. Godliness, which is infinite and without any constraints. Shalomai, Lamishach as Veilamis, which is beyond any kind of relatedness to worldliness, and this itself has to be brought into the world. Nevertheless, we say Bresh is Kiakavon, the Tayr, the purpose of Tayr. Is Laham Shach Gilead and Seif Abligal and Taka to bring down the infinite godly light of Ain Seif, but Behag Vulda Elam into the finitude of the world, and the world should be able to receive it and hold it. Which is why Yesh Betayr Agam, the Tayr includes in its narrative. All the Tayr speaks about mitzvahs and Gila Lukus in the world, it also speaks about Ha'akod is the Maisa Bereshis, the story of creation. But then Laham Shach Abligal the Tayr to bring down the infinitude of the Tayr, Gam Ba Elam, even into the world as it's finite and separate from Lukus. The last says, "We men who did only is baruch has to make it a home for our kaddish baruch." So, bechitzenius Hashem creates the world bebreishes and bepnimius that the pnimius of that chitzenius is a chendish of alochem. Ella, but there's a kvetch, and the kvetch is shebechdei shagil I believe all the teira in order for the infinitude of the teira. Ye should be revealed gamba elam in the world, but the world kameishum bemitzias michutz la teira kvechal. The world does exist as a form unto itself, separate from the teira, without the teira. L'chaim pasach b'bereishis. That's why he begins with bereishis. 
Shaha God of the Maisa Beis, the story of the count of creation. Now, that of the Pasha Shalyachas and the subsequent story, this Lifnei Pasha Zachedish before Achedish, which is Mitzvah Rishedish in the Stabba by Yisrael, is Bechtei Shayadei Limud Hatera Vakiyam Amitzvah, by our learning to end doing Mitzvahs. Yihye, there should be Gili Abeligul the Teh, the revelation of the infinitude of the Teh, the Gamba, Chela, the Ha'elam, even in that portion of the world. Kamesha Hayal, Lifnei, Kiyam, Ateru, Mitzvah, as it was before Ayid learned in Davin and did Mitzvah. The Kivan, the Zesh, Posach, Bereshis. And since when he creates the world of Bereshis, it's Bereshis, Begili Abeligul the Teh, the Mitzvah, it's so that, then the infinitude, which was represented by Teh and Mitzvah, Hachedish is Alechem, which is Nisan. Ye ye gam beha ingin, it should be also when the idea of Bereshe is, which is Kamesh Lifne Basha Zachedish. The world is for Teda. But the Abishta wants the world should be separate from Teda, that even that world, which is separate from Teda, should hold the Teda. And Nims, as a result, it turns out, she bepnimis hanyan, and that under the surface, bepnimis has cholahi ba achedish is Alechem. Since the point of everything is to be Magal Alechus in the world, the pnimis of the created world is a chedish. The pnimis, the bereishis, the pnei pach the chedish, the inner dimension of bereishis, which is before a chedish, is a chedish as alochem. So so far, the juxtaposition of bereishis on a chedish is the same as the juxtaposition as a nisn and tishrei. But now the rebbe continues. Vehine, you do what we all know. The bereishis elam, which is bereishis, was bechafei biyalo. Now we split the hair. Creation happens on Chav Hebe Yellow, which is not Tishrei, it's Elo. Which is Brinas Koi, which is the day of Godliness being available only in a Koi, in an approximate way. And then the sixth day of creation, which is the first day of Tishrei. Adam Rishon is created, and at that moment already, Nasagila Lukuz Ba'elam, Godliness is revealed in the world. That in this world you see Godliness precisely. So here you have a complication. You don't have two things, you have three things. You have Nisim, which is a Gilead Lukus, which is higher than the world. You have Chav Hayel, where Hashem is so hidden that the relationship with the Abish in the world is called Koi. And then you have Aleph Tishrei. Aleph Tishrei is already a world where Godness is revealed sufficiently that you look in the world and you see Hashem in the way of them. Says the Rebbe El. But you cannot compare Aleph Tishrei to Nisim. Because the fact that Adam Edition in his being created, and of course, like it says in the Medrashim, that Adam Edition Davin, then he said, Beyu, and Nishtachem, and Nechor, and Nivach of Neavaye, Seinu, Adam Edition, that the whole creation to serve Hashem. And in getting the creation to serve Hashem, he revealed godliness in the creation. It's not comparable to the godliness which is revealed on Nissan slash Sivan when the Abish should give the Tayr. So Rosh Hashanah is also Gilead Holocaust. Because it's the creation of man and man's purpose and what man did. But it cannot be compared to Nisan. And therefore you have three in Yonim. You have Nisan, you have Tishri, and you have Chav Hebi Yellow. So in the juxtaposition of Nisan and Tishri, we're comparing Nisan to Rosh Hashanah. In the juxtaposition of Achevich, it's Alachem and Bereshit, we have the juxtaposition of Nisan and Chav Hebi Yellow. And accordingly, we could say, the Zesh Ha'achedish as Alechem who apnim is the Benishis. But the idea that the world is created in Chav Hey Yellow, which is represented by the Pasuk Benishis, but Alekim Eisah Shmaim Vesharet, and that the soul behind that, the pnimius of that, is already the Ha'achedish as Alechem. Says the Rebbe, who nightly yes and mizeh is even higher than the idea. Shachuv the Ha'adam that when a person does tshuva through his bittel. It's Be'efen, the believable, has absolute infinity. Dil il siv zayin. And it brings together the person, which is Tishrei, and the believable, which is Nisan, and makes them into a oneness. That even though the juxtaposition of the person's chuva and the Indian of believable, which is connected to Tishrei and Nisan, is extraordinarily high, it's not as high as the juxtaposition of Chav Hayalal and Achedish Hazalachem. In other words, the bringing together of opposites, which is connected to Nisan versus Tishrei, is not as great a bringing together of opposites as the bringing together Achedish Hazalachem and Bereish Hazbaralachim. Ki Achibur de Bligvul Agvul Ayedei Hatshuva. The bringing together of the infinitude of a Lakus and the Tshuva of a person through Bittal 
and the gvul of the creation, idea tshuva da ha'adam, to the tshuva of a person, he lemaila me hagbala, which is without any limits. It's hagilui, gilui, habaligvul de teiru mitzvahs, it reveals the infinity of the mitzvahs, be ha'aylam in the world, but what kind of a world, kameshu badarga zeh, that world that's in some way already a seat for Lakus because it's called Zeh, which denotes that it already by itself is an Indian of Gilea Lakus. So Tishrei and Nisan is revealing higher godliness in a world which is lower but also godly. As opposed to Zeh Shachedish Alachem, who are Pneumius, the Bereshes Baralakim, the idea that Hachedish is the Pneumius of Bereshes Baralakim, which is the Chafhe Yellow, it's Habugilui, Habuligvulde Teiru Mitzvahs. It's the revelation of the infinitude of Tere Mitzvahs, Ba'olam in a world not connected to Aleph Tishrei, but to Chav Yellow, which is a world, Kumeshu Badalagas Koi, where Godness is so concealed that the presence of Hashem is only called Koi. So, Beklalus, the juxtaposition of Nishan and Tishrei, and the Chedish Alechem and Bereshis is the same, and Bepratios, the juxtaposition of Nisan and Tishrei, is still the juxtaposition of Alakus and Alakus. And the juxtaposition of Achelish and Achem is the juxtaposition of Alakus and world. And the Rebbe explains the difference in time. And at this point, I'm going to tell you what I think the Rebbe is saying, although maybe I'm reading too much into it. The revelation of bringing together Nisn and Chaf that means Achelish and Achem is going to be be'ikir primarily behagula in the redemption shall achar ha tshuva the saves managos after the tshuva the end of the times of golos that at the end of golos we do tshuva and the tshuva at the end of golos is the juxtaposition of nisn over tishrei benisn asidim lihigol and the revelation which happens after the giyula this is the juxtaposition of nisn and chavhei biyelo day day gili habligvo bahoyelo first we do tshuva in the end of golos are revealed the infinitude of godliness in the world. Where the world is in a state of revealing godliness on some level, which is idea, which is accomplished through the truth end of Golas. And then the Giyula happens, and then there will subsequent to that be immediately. The infinitude of God is revealed in the world as the world is by itself. So the later stage is revealing a higher godliness and a lower worldliness. And idea through this latter idea, Tushla Makavon it completes, it perfects the purpose of Dira Batachtenim, Bain Tachtan Chain Tachtan Mata Mimenu, in something which is so low there's nothing lower than it, which means even creation that's not in the way of Zeh, but it's in the way of Koi, which is even deeper than bringing the Alakus of Nisn into Rosh Hashanah, which is Zeh, which is Aleph Tish. But to be sure, this is also included in the Gemma Talmudic statement, that we say, that the Oif and Atshuva is Tishrei like, but the Gili of Tshuva is Nisan like this idea, it's not only what happens before the Giyula, which is bringing together Aleph Tishrei and Nisan, but what happens after the Giyula, which is bringing together Chav Hei and Nisan. Turn to, the, turn to page Reish, that's he, the legal coil agula, shachari atshuva, because the redemption of the future is not only what happens during the tshuva, but what happens after the tshuva. And during the tshuva, we're bringing together Aleph Tishrei and this. And after the tshuva, we're bringing together Chav Hayal and this. And this is also included in the Betishrei, Benis Nasidim Legal, Shagam Hagili Be'elam. Shia the revelation which will happen in the world, which I wrote on the margin Chav Hay. Which happens after the gil? I day I see as such tshuva the Israel of Neis as the tshuva didn't do immediately prior to that. Yeah, but between this Nissan, it also happens in the month of Nissan. Just like the Tishrei like tshuva is revealed in Nissan lost at Love, the Chav Heyelo like tshuva is revealed in Nissan the lost at Love because then it's going to be revealed the Eir Abeligavol Sholamayla Mishaychas Leilamis, godliness which is completely removed from any association with worldliness is going to be revealed. But the revelation will be in such a form as the inner dimension of the world itself. The Rebbe would say in more recent times, take it from a Yad Mamish. Now, I wish I had more Oasis to explain the difference between the juxtaposition of Nisan and Rosh Hashanah and the juxtaposition of Nisan and Chafei Biyalo. 
both are world, but one is a world that's godly and the other is a world that's worldly. And into the world that's godly, you're bringing the infinity of godliness, and then into the world that's worldly, you're also bringing the infinity of godliness, which is even a deeper bringing together of two opposites. But I don't have any more words. So we'll call it a class. (laughs) 